Hello, everyone. You are listening to UO Radio with DJ Sakara. And um, as part of our um, weekly community interviews, we're going to have a very, very special interview today. We're going to be interviewing not so much a guild, but um, a few guilds that are part of the beautiful town of Paxlayer of Chesapeake. And so we're not only going to be talking with them, we're actually going to be getting a grand tour of their beautiful um, town. It's actually more than just one town. It's two towns and um, a couple of outposts, but we will be having a tour of their two main towns. And um, we have quite a few members of their, um, the various guilds that are part of the Paxlair town, and um, they will be introducing themselves in a few seconds, and uh, they will be giving us the grand tour and giving us an overview of the history of Paxlair, of uh, their uh, government, and of uh, role playing in general. And so this should be very, very interesting. And so we're going to start um, with uh, the introductions. The introductions, my God, of our guests today. And I guess I'm going to start with. Um, Winfield, just as a reminder, they will be in character, so this should be a treat for all you role players out there. So Winfield, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Mayor Winfield of Paxlair, and just want to say thanks for hosting us here in Paxlair. We'll take you on a grand tour, see how things go, and got a lot of great things to talk to you about. I took a little time out for my fishing today to go ahead and be here. Normally Sundays are my day off. So welcome UO Radio. Welcome all the UO Radio listeners. Thank you. And uh, now we will be uh, meeting Garrett, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Lord Garrett. I'm the vice mayor of Pax OQ. I basically run the entire city. I'm here, actually I have a meeting, but I would never miss being on a show with UO Radio. Hello, Garrett. And now we're uh, moving on to our elven friend. I'm sorry, I'm probably going to massacre your name, but <laughs> you will have to forgive me. Um, Elish Laryl, I believe, if you would like to introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Elish Laryl. Uh, I'm the Minister of Quests for Pax Lair, uh, basically in charge of facilitating quests and questings and uh, keeping up with the uh, player quests and EM quests in the realm. Welcome. I will call you um, Elish if that's okay. <laughs> and okay. Um, our, our next guest is um, Elijah Cross, if you would like to introduce yourself. Hi, this is Elijah Cross. Uh, I'm the guild leader of the Paladins of Virtue, a Guard force of a guard force and citizen guild of Pax Lair, uh, and just to add a shameless plug, we are recruiting. Okay. <laughs> and um, our next guest is um, also an elf, and it is Visago. Hello, everyone. I'm Visago of House Allendale. Uh, actually, I run that guild. Uh, we currently run the Thursday night events uh, for Pax Lair and the Pax Alliance. Uh, and we're proud members of the Alliance. Thanks. And last but not least, we have um, Lucy, who I believe is a friend of the Alliance, if you would like to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Lucy. I'm from um, the Guild X. I am a former member of the Alliance and also a friend of Paxlair. So welcome, everyone, and thank you to be here with us. And now that the introduc introductions have been made, um, I will be starting off a couple of questions before we actually um, set off on our tour of uh, the town. And uh, we are currently in the Mage Tower of um, Paxlair, and this is where we will be starting our um, grand tour of the town from. Now, the first question, all my questions are always addressed to every single one of you, so um, if any one of you want to, uh, to answer, just uh, wave and I will gladly um, allow you to speak. Now, um, for all the people listening, as usual, if you have any questions um, during the course of this interview, you are uh, more than welcome to ask those questions in I, uh, our IRC channel and I will forward your questions to our guests. 
Now, um, the first question would be uh, more about the history of uh, Paxlair, and it would be like, who were the founders of Paxlair, and when was it created? Yes, Winfield. Yes, Winfield here again. Uh, the Paxlair started around January 1998 in the Year of the Gods, and it was started by a guild called The Band. The Band had been around from uh, very ancient times within the realm, and initially setting up their, their host of houses in the guard zone area on the prison isle in Yu. But we wanted a place to be able to have open combat, an open environment for people to get together. And uh, after scoping out this wonderful meadow northwest of the, uh, the Compassion Shrine, we started placing some buildings. And rapidly, it began growing into a larger community. A lot of other guilds started placing their houses in the area. And Paxlair was born out of multiple guilds, multiple people, and people not even of any guilds. So uh, that's basically how Paxlair got started. But originally, was it called Paxlair, or was it just um, all these people getting together and, you know, just building houses together in the area, and eventually you guys decided to organize yourselves into a more, I guess, structured society, an actual city? Yeah, that's a good question and a good point. Uh, we placed the buildings uh, around January 19th of, of that year. And within a couple of months, we did name the town as Pax Lair. We realized that so many people were trying to get involved in the area, and including the gods uh, had come to the area wondering what we were doing, that we eventually needed a, a single spokesman for the area. Uh, so we formed a small government, a council, and organized all our efforts so that we could hear from everybody in the meadow who were placing houses, and we formed the community of Paxlair in that way. So it did take a couple of months after everybody basically got their act together in this area. And so was there a lot of resistance, um, you know, when you started trying to organize things? Because obviously once you do start putting structures in place and having a form of uh, hierarchy, you may have some people that are not necessarily in favor. Uh, yes, that happened uh, from time to time. Some other guilds would uh, want to control the area, so there would be a lot of combat. Uh, but rapidly, uh, we were perhaps more organized with many guilds. Uh, there was a guild, Sillyhood, that was very involved with us from the start, and we worked with them. And uh, working with uh, several guilds, basically the other guilds then joined us rather than combated against us, which led us to a philosophy of Paxlair to be a neutral area where anybody of any, any color, any side, uh, offense or defense uh, could come and check your equipment at the door and basically get to know everybody in the area. So there was some confrontation earlier on. Uh, and it continues today. People try to take over the Paxlair area, um, and we try to defend it, and, um, and that goes on and on, a, a constant struggle all the time. Um, without delving too much into all the politics and such, because we will be covering this a little bit later on in the interview, um, are we to understand that to this day, Paxlair is still a neutral um, town, and therefore anyone would technically be able to come in and out of Paxlair without fearing getting attacked by anyone, including enemy guilds, as long as you're on the Paxlair territory. That is the main philosophy, the Paxlair territory being a neutral ground uh, in a way that uh, guilds can come and basically the defenders will not attack first unless attacked uh, unless they are attacked first. So it is the philosophy still over the last seven years that all of our areas are open to everybody. Everybody can come and cooperate with us. The uh, main ideas are neutrality and respect. And we tend to get that out of most people we interact with. That's really nice. Um, 
geez, I have so many questions I want to ask you, but um, I kind of do not want to uh, be all over the place. So I guess a lot of the story of the current Paxlo, because right now we are in the um, uh, Falukan town of Paxlair, and um, you will be telling us quite a bit of the history of the city and, um, you know, the various, I guess, structures that build the city and therefore give us a good idea of the people that are involved in this, um, in this town. And so I guess we could start with the touring and you can tell us more about it and then um, afterwards we can talk more about um, the questing and the, um, the uh, diplomacy with other guilds. All right, very good. Well, let me uh, lead us out of this room here, which is on the second floor of the Mage Tower, and we will go up to the roof. Uh, we have a, uh, a sky page that we have that uh, shows the top of the roof back in the year of, the God's year of 1998, when Lord British did uh, visit the town, and we're sitting on top of that roof now. Yeah, I did notice that you have uh, a plaque on the right above uh, the main door of the tower. This is, uh, this is very nice. So, proclamation of distinction by His Royal Majesty Lord British. That is uh, quite the nice visit card that he left you guys. And he left those things for us um, and with the help of his, uh, his creators within the realm. He left those things not for Pax Lair as an entity, but really for the whole community. So our philosophy is Pax Lair is here for everybody, for the whole shard, forever as long as, as uh, things continue. There's a, I noticed uh, quite a, a number of, uh, of blessings on this, uh, on this tower. I believe they were all granted, uh, bestowed upon the town by Sears. Yes, uh, we were heavily involved with Sears back in those days, and um, and the the gods had come in and to maybe experiment a little bit with the community and see what kinds of features the community would like. They did install a a moon gate that takes us to the first floor of this uh, this old tower, and as we progress over to the other building, the twin towers of Paxlair are actually connected by teleporters. This is probably one of the few sets of buildings in the realm where two buildings are actually physically connected in that manner. Yeah, I remember during my very first visit to Paxlair, um, I, I actually stepped through the teleporter and I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Um, then again, I didn't know at the time that um, Paxlair had um, a neutral philosophy. So I was just thinking to myself, well, you know, whenever there are murderers lurking around, this is a good way to go from one building to the other without exposing yourself too much to danger. Yes, uh, there was a lot of experimentation back in those old days, even when we could not actually lock down our own items in the buildings. Uh, the gods had come in and locked down items because we were redecorating every day. The, the area was so popular that people were stealing all of our items overnight and we just have to recraft everything. So they decided to go ahead and lock down and things just kind of built off from there. And since we had a government in place uh, and a, an ability to cooperate with many people, um, we, we turned our community into something that would try to deal with as many people as possible within the realm, both uh, good and evil. And right now, what is this we're, uh, we're standing at? It's actually quite beautiful. We are standing at uh, what's called the Fire Monument. It's right near the Twin Towers outside. Uh, there were problems back in the early days that people would place tents and houses along the main streets of Pax Lair. And since we had a, a bit of a commitment by, by the gods to go ahead and, and try to help build this community, to go ahead and, um, and I guess you could say block some areas to, to keep the roads open, and this particular fire monument was placed to do that, but they just didn't want to put rocks down on the outsides of the area like they had to do in some other places, but make something a little more uh, useful for the people of the realm. Well, that was a very creative idea. This is really, really nice. 
I can also say that there is a, another, uh, another town that actually started before us, and that was the Doer of You, and it recently changed hands up by the U gate in Feluca, and they also have a lot of, of these kinds of features outside. It's also, uh, can you remind me, where did you say it was located? Uh, the Doer of You is up near the U gate here in Feluca on Chesapeake. Oh, that's not bad. I definitely have to uh, go visit that. And so I, I really noticed that um, your town especially has received an incredible number of, uh, of uh, blessings. And every single time, I just can never tire of looking at them. Um, I believe somebody has a question. Go ahead, Viceroy. Yes, I actually have a question about this fire mon uh, monument. Um, what is it uh, exactly supposed to symbolize, or, or is there some special meaning behind it? Uh, because I'm not quite sure if I understood uh, what it's supposed to symbolize or anything, if it, if it, if it is indeed supposed to symbolize something. Yeah, it, it symbolizes the, um, the evil nature of parts of Pax Lair. We have good sides of Pax Lair and evil parts, and we try to keep them in balance through, a, through neutral concepts. And when this monument appeared, there were massive invasions of undead brought forth uh, by a seer and just uh, totally devastated the Pax Lair area for some time. And uh, that's really what this uh, signifies, and it continues to signify the evil nature of Pax Lair, or part of it. Alrighty, and so where are you taking us next? All right, we'll take you back uh, towards. I'm sorry, I believe um, Ilish wants to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, I also believe this uh, monument was used in uh, some of the quests, major quests, to uh, as a uh, place for uh, race to cast spells and. Uh, I think one of the major quests we had. Okay, and now we are at... I believe, Winfield, you can tell us what this is we're looking at. All right, this is another monument, and we're not even sure who the uh, the two people in the statues are. They've never been named. Uh, they did appear one day. We're still trying to figure it out. There's so many things of lore and legend that we still don't understand. Uh, but this was placed uh, near the open area where we have a, uh, a cafe area, right next to a stable where we used to have a stable master who used to take the uh, pets and put them in the stable. And that stable master is now gone. Um, the gods have chosen uh, uh, not to place one back, or we just haven't contacted them about it recently. I remember when I first saw the statue, I originally thought maybe it was um, in honor of the founders of, uh, of the town, but since there were no names inscribed on them, I just, I just wonder. And yes, I remember also looking at the stables and wondering if maybe the, um, the uh, oh my god, the pet keeper, how do you call them? Stable master, there you go. Um, I wonder if maybe you had gone for a coffee or gone for an ale and just <laughs> got himself way too drunk and never came back to work. And this building over here, uh, I remember entering, oh yes, this uh, building was the Ladies of the Lair. What is this exactly? Okay, the Ladies of the Lair was a guild that uh, formed in Pax Lair, and they hosted uh, many parties with lots of ladies around, and uh, over time they uh, gained their own special interest by the seers and the gods, and this building became what you would call blessed uh, back in these old days on their own, uh, through their own volition as part of Pax Lair, but also uh, for the activity that they drew to, uh, to this establishment. And so what did they mostly do over here? Do you, do you actually? Basically, you could come here nearly 24-7 uh, out of the day, 24 hours out of our seven-day week, and find somebody in this building to talk to, to chat with, to repair your items, um, 
And uh, this is something, maybe a little bit of the past, but, but people would actually hang out in these places, and you'd always be able to find somebody. I think that's uh, probably the one thing um, I miss the most. There, there used to be areas like this um, in uh, my, own, uh, my own realm. Um, it was, there were certain areas you knew whenever you, would, you had nothing to do or were just looking for some companionship, there was always somebody there to do something or just chit chat or whatever. Yes, exactly. And that's the kind of community that we tried to have and still try to have. And it's, it's tough with everybody scattered throughout the realm so much and easy to get around that it's tough to, to just have a place where they know they're going to find people. And as uh, things have changed through Pax Lair and, and the advent of Takuno and, and other locations, uh, we just get, even ourselves, get spread out quite a bit. As we are kind of getting right now, we have a lot of people just running all over the place. There seems to be so much to say, but um, I know there is one thing I'm kind of really curious to say, but I don't want to ruin the order of the visit you had planned, so lead the way. Where are we headed off to next? Okay, we're going to head on the uh, north side of Pax Lair here now over to an area that... Um, that we have an arena tower where we've had uh, fight competitions and I think some other folks uh, in our group can can chime in and talk a little bit about how we've started to build an alliance within Pax Lair, an alliance that is very diversified between evil and good and defense and offense and uh, trying to just take care of uh, uh, the needs of many people who like to uh, participate in Pax Lair. Alrighty, and who will volunteer for this? Don't all talk at the same time. I don't bite. Well, I do bite, but only in real life. Well, I guess they're all too shy. Oh, here's Lucy volunteering. That's my girl. Go ahead, Lucy. Well, um, I was, uh, I joined the PAX Alliance right when it first started, and it's been truly amazing when, um, you know, having so many people come together to, you know, to fight for the common good. And even when, you know, we have like guilds such as the Paladins, they can get along with, you know, with my former guild, which were mostly, you know, all murderers, that we could all get them, get along and work together. And it was just something really amazing, you know. And so what is the exact role of this tower? Unfortunately, we can't seem to get in, but so what is the, um, this was basically like a combat pit. This is where people would come to duel and uh, and such. Oh yes, exactly. This was uh, originally a tower, uh, and then we turned it into a dueling area. If we uh, quickly run to the south a little bit, we'll be able to see the outdoor tower that was installed by by the gods, or not the outside tower, but the outside arena that was installed by the gods so that we did have an enclosed place to fight. We even had keys to the doors to hopefully try to keep people out of the arena as we were doing duels. Well, over time, uh, the keys don't work anymore on the, uh, the god-created building. So we had to go ahead and build another building uh, that would be a little bit more secure for various tournaments. And the North Arena Tower was even used uh, in, a, in a different form for the, uh, the Champs uh, Tournament about a year ago. And they've actually just started a new tournament up by the Chaos Shrine here in Faluka over this season. So uh, we try to open up as much as we can uh, to combat people, to have tournaments, and uh, whatever they'd really like to do in the area. Yeah, I thought it was a, a really nice arena when I first saw it. And these steps here, is it like a podium? I kind of assume that's what it was. Yeah. yeah, in this outdoor arena, there is a place to go ahead and stand as the judge. And then you have guards at each door that can open up the doors when our keys did work and uh, kept a semblance of order inside the arena. Do you still today have um, a number of uh, such tournaments um, taking place, or, or is it more um, scarce and random when it happens? We had tournaments uh, for several months, part of the Chesapeake Flight Fight Club, um, 
Blue Collar set that up for us, and he became part of the Paxlair environment. And he ran fights out of the North Tower. And uh, we've since stopped doing that because he had to move on to other things. But we welcome anyone who would like to come in and run tournaments in this town, and we're able to uh, go ahead and, and help them obtain some level of ownership of the building so that they can run tournaments on their own within this uh, city. Wonderful. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Miss Sarah just attacked you. That is awesome. Um, Vicer has a question. Go ahead. Yes, I got a question. Uh, you know, you, you pretty much said, you know, whether or not uh, people have a, the, or better yet, you basically said that people have the opportunity to come in and set up an event at your one your arenas or something like that. And now, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Champs one of the uh, guilds in which uh, take advantage of this uh, opportunity to take a, you know, make use of your arena or stuff like that? And don't you guys have like a, um, I'm not sure how, how often you guys do, but to my knowledge, isn't there something called uh, CFC, uh, Chesapeake Fight Club, or something like that, and can you tell us a little bit about that? Right, the uh, Chesapeake Flight, Fight Club we had for a while back, and uh, every week we would uh, invite people in for a tournament, and uh, the Fight Club still has its statistics on our Sky page, uh, and uh, champs would uh, participate in that. Uh, there'd be some uh, really good fighters, and we'd give out uh, mainly... Uh, We'd have monthly awards, and during the weekly tournaments, it was to be able to get up to the monthly fight. Um, so the place is open for many people to use, and uh, we try to stay respectfully engaged with all of the, the people, particularly of Felucca in this area. And we know that they have interests uh, to come and fight people in Paxlair or to defend people in Paxlair. So it's just uh, how they would like to uh, involve the area. All righty. Um, so where are we off to next? All right. We'll uh, take you over to Alicia Lareel's house and let him explain about the quests here in Paxlair and uh, where we're kind of going in the future. Okay. Oh, my God. I had the uh, – I left my, uh, my horse behind, and I'm kind of running out of breath here. I'm old and out of shape, and I have to uh, – to get my act together soon. Oh, Fisako, you are like such a gentleman. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, so I believe this is your house, Ishlareel. Care to tell us about it? Well, this is my uh, office in Pax Lair. Uh, it's open. Well, you have to pretty much be friended to get in at the moment, but. Uh, try to keep it open and try to be around if anybody has uh, uh, a desire to run a quest or needs help uh, organizing a quest, player run quest, uh, technically that's my job. And also I try to store uh, items and books and whatnot connected with uh, EM quests and other quests uh, from the past and just basically try to keep a quest library. And so you store all the information here, but do you um, also organize um, quests and events from there? Generally, I, uh, well, I haven't yet. I'm fairly new to the position, but uh, if someone in the realm needs uh, uh, my input or thinks they may need help, you know, uh, pulling a quest off or I have uh, resources available through uh, you know from imagination to what you know houses or whatever to help them uh, uh, have a successful quest so hopefully in the future I'll, I'll be able to do more of that but and occasionally I'm thinking about doing my own quest and but mainly alerting people to the EM quest and keeping a record of what has happened is, is mainly what I do. And do you have um, a log of all the, the, uh, the quests that were held way back from the early days, or is it more um, recent? 
Uh, it's mainly I have to rely on the uh, Sky pages uh, associated with PaxLayer for most of that information. I did participate in in some of that, but uh, most of it uh, was was before my time. And I still have a lot of stuff that many people in PaxLayer weren't involved with that I have records of that uh, I haven't quite uh, got it all organized yet. But I've been in several other uh, towns and one near uh, Brit, uh, Brit in Trammell, I believe, which I, I still have some information on. Well, that's wonderful. I think that's probably one of the things that's lacking the most on many, many, um, in many, many towns, the fact that there is very little records um, on the events that took place in the past, and um, those that are that are existing are seldom available or accessible to um, to the community. So. Garrett, please behave. So anyways, um, I think it's, uh, it's a really wonderful thing that you're doing. Um, Vice Roy has a question for you. Go ahead, Vice. Yes, I got a question. And uh, the question is this. You know, basically you mentioned a little bit earlier that you have some, uh, some resources at your disposal which you can use to help other players promote their quests and stuff like that in the game. I'm kind of curious as to exactly what kind of resources are those exactly and how do you go about, you know, getting the word out towards, uh, you know, to other players and, you know, and... Do you pretty much uh, get the word out to just players on the Chesapeake for the most part, or do you also try to reach inner shard, you know, across different shards and let people know about upcoming events on other different shards as well? Um, go ahead and uh, answer that if you could, please. Uh, the main tools would be uh, just, uh, uh, well, you know, to go out of character a little bit, uh, yeah, props and... Uh, the ability to create characters for other people's quests, uh, to build houses and uh, decorate them appropriately. Uh, also, to write backstory or to help uh, evolve game mechanics to uh, you know, to to make a quest seem more plausible or more real or more interesting. Uh, mainly, uh, I alert, as far as alerting for quests, uh, I keep track of other people's quests. Not not necessarily Pax Lair quests, but, uh, and try to inform uh, the Pax Lair citizens of uh, that at our weekly meeting. Also, when the EM quest will take place, I try to keep track of uh, when it will uh, happen, which happened two weeks ago, I believe, that uh, ended up getting a lot of people from the uh, entire shard involved in that quest. I believe Winfield wants to add something. Go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Um, We've been involved in quests for a very long time. Militia Reels uh, getting into a lot of the questing these days, and uh, we've actually have some guilds uh, participating in our alliance or in our citizenry, who have offered to to basically go out and hang out in a tavern and be a person that people need to talk to on a quest, or even play an enemy in a quest. So it's uh, so through Militia Reels contacts and others in Paxlayer, we're able to try to take someone who would like to, uh, to run their own quest, uh, make something interesting from their point of view, and we're able to, uh, to go and try to execute it. Also, there's an entity that runs around this area, as well as throughout Chesapeake. He's called uh, the Gatekeeper. Some people may have seen him running around and call him an entity because we don't know really whether he's dead or alive. He just doesn't really say much about himself. Uh, but he uh, he has come through Pax Lair. He's come through Scarabray quite a few times on community nights on Wednesdays. And uh, you never know what's going to happen with him because he'll take people off into danger and, uh, and uh, try to involve as many people as he can. That's wonderful. And so now we are moving on. <laughs> 
with our tour while people are distributing wedgies left and right. Strange people in Paxley. But um, where are we going next? We'll go ahead and head down to um, actually in front of the Mage Tower where we started. I'd like to explain a little bit since we're on the topic of quests. The uh, actual first item that was placed outside of buildings by the gods uh, here in Pax Lair, and it's known as our Spring of Courage. I was wondering what, what um, that was about, because uh, it's like a little fountain, and, uh, and we can see the water just like flowing. And what was it? Do you know what the story was behind this? Oh, yes. Uh, back in very early days, uh, when our community was growing, uh, the Lady Windmere, who is uh, a person that many people know in Paxlair, came across uh, someone who had a, a uh, bit of water that they had obtained in one of the dungeons. And uh, that person had donated it to the Paxlair community. And uh, we presented it to the gods, and the gods said, oh, this is kind of neat. Uh, let me put this down outside and build a wall around it. So that is how the the spring of courage and uh, actually back then it was called the spring of knowledge. It was later corrupted through a, uh, I guess what you would call a seer quest with Mazarim back in very early days. And Mazarim turned the entire spring blood red. It flowed red for about a year. And then uh, one of our most famous stories and one that we, we uh, cherish the most was Seer Damien, who was... Uh, a very strong presence throughout this shard back in those days. And uh, he uh, sacrificed himself, physically sacrificed himself uh, to cure the spring through a massive quest that took place and then it eventually turned blue and uh, he was honored, uh, actually the spring was then honored as the spring of courage due to Seer Damien's courage, not just uh, for this particular quest, but his courage throughout the entire realm as a seer of uh, real not notoriety. That's amazing. Um, I do know the seers have done so much to uh, bring great excitement to, uh, to the shards um, over the years. But now, um, how, I guess, how much, how many events do you get on a more or less weekly basis going, um, whether the ones that are brought to you by your EMs or the ones that you create um, yourself. I would like to uh, go ahead and ask uh, Visago, who handles a lot of our weekly adventures these days, to answer that. Sure. Well, well actually. Sure. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, right now we run uh, an event or an outing every Thursday night uh, around 9 p.m. And it runs usually till about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Uh, each week we try to go to someplace different, not necessarily someplace that we've all been to before, um, which actually makes it more exciting. Uh, for example, the other night we went down to uh, the Tainted Grove for the first time for many of us and uh, explored that region a lot. Um, a lot of times we go to places where we've been several times, such as the Gauntlet and Dungeon Doom or the Blood Dungeon to hunt paragons for blood elementals. But for the most part, we try to include everybody and make it something that everyone will enjoy. Uh, sometimes all these people can't get to the places that we go to on their own, uh, and that is uh, a big plus when we have a group going so that people feel more secure and safe in, in those strange environments. And so when you speak about this, because Paxlayer, as I understand it, is, just, is not just one guild. It's, just, it's really a group of various guilds, and so you would not be going to all these events and hunts as, you know, normal, as most other guilds would do, just like one guild going together and one other guild going together. You would be going as Pax Lair and therefore as a group of all these various guilds. Is that what, um, what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's open to people outside of the Alliance as well, uh, and it's one of the tools that we use to uh, spread the, the word of Pax Lair to get people knowledgeable in us. Um, it's pretty much a, kind of like a coalition of groups. So I put out a call letting people know where we're going, uh, sometimes weeks in advance, 
And then anyone who's interested in coming along, whether they're with PaxLayer or not, is more than encouraged to come. I think that is really wonderful. Fortunately, most of the time, uh, every other guild seems to be, you know, just doing their own little thing on their own. And I think you guys have really captured the essence of the meaning community. And uh, it's great to see it still uh, alive and strong and thriving in uh, at least somewhere in Caesarea. That's actually what and drew me to Pax Lair. Well, I can't blame you. I think it's really an amazing, um, it's just amazing to see this happening. And so now, where are we going now that the, uh, I'm afraid your spring of courage has, uh, has been corrupted once more? <laughs> oh, that's, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Uh, the spring gets a lot of attention and a lot of quests get applied to it. Uh, a little bit to the west here is a new structure called the Balance of Paxler, the Balance of Justice, and it is a, uh, a feature that was placed here so that uh, actually between the Twin Towers to show the balance of evil and good in this area and the neutral stance on things. So it is a symbolic uh, type of structure, but it's also a uh, place that people can use that is open to the public for people to uh, try, you know, the offenders, put them on one stand versus another, and hold a court session if they would like to, and then execute sentence to them uh, after they hold the court session. That is great. I was kind of wondering at first, but now that you mentioned it, it's really quite clear what it is. This is really awesome. And yes, I think Vice Roy should be tried for um, crimes against Sakara. And uh, I have few ideas as for uh, as to what kind of punishment should be exacted on him because he's a brute, quite frankly. Woohoo! He has been found guilty. Um, I have the. <laughs> I want to be uh, the executioner. Yes, do please bring me a rope. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to hang um, our good friend Viceroy for his numerous crimes. Yeah, yeah. You would totally deserve it. <laughs> well, alrighty. So this, this <laughs> I can't believe people are actually cheering as we are about to put an end to the life of Viceroy. But see, Viceroy, no, no, no. see, Vice it's karma. You absolutely yeah, had yeah, yeah. it coming. Okay, um, there is one building that. Um, well, I'm not quite sure what it was. It was next to the um, the arena, um, and I wanted to ask you about it. Uh, as I recall, it was called the the uh, the bells of Paxley or something like that. Oh yes, uh, I missed that in the uh, area right behind the twin towers. If we head back that way, there is an open uh, courtyard uh, festival area, which uh, were placed here for the many festivals and speeches and concerts, actually, that we've held in, in Pax Lair in the past. And um, also is placed here by the gods again, a structure of the Pax Lair bells. And you can see one of them are blue, and the other one is red, also signifying the balance of Pax Lair between good and evil as a neutral area. And, and no, apparently the uh, bells do not ring, uh, probably because no one can get up there close enough to see it except the, uh, except the EMs who happen to be here right now. And actually swinging on one of the bells. That Masara is doing. Yep. I believe uh, she was also the one taking a, um, taking a little dip in, the, in your Fountain of Courage. No. No, that was actually uh, the other one. Uh, I think it was Cena. Man. Such misbehaving. Shame, shame. But yeah, I, I remember thinking that was uh, pretty cool. And, uh, you know, with that, all those uh, picnic tables in front of the bakery. This is great. And so, yes, uh, Winfield, go ahead. Yes, and right behind us is probably one of the most famous buildings in Paxlair as well. It's Luigi's Pizzeria and Bakery. It was uh, 
one of the initial buildings in the area, and it hosted all of the parties that were held outside here. And it was, it was always a lot of fun to protect people during our celebrations. And uh, he would serve up the pizzas. And Luigi's gone now, but his name remains, and it is still known as one of the best pizzerias in the realm. Well, um, I will definitely have to uh, drop by here and uh, have a bite one of these days. I got a question, as a matter of fact. Go ahead, Vice. Sure. I, I was just kind of uh, curious to whether or not you guys deliver and who runs the pizzeria now. Actually, the pizzeria is rather dormant right now. We do not have a new proprietor for it. Uh, Luigi did at uh, back in his day, a few years ago, he did make uh, house calls, and you could order out for pizza, and he actually would deliver them to your house. Oh, okay. So, did y'all have a slogan for your your pizzeria or anything like pizza pizza or something like that? Well, I'd have to my, rack my brain to remember it, but um, I think he did have one. Uh, he even had his own sky page that uh, offered pizzas throughout the realm at a moment's notice, practically. Oh, well, that's great. Go ahead, Sikara. Um, already. And so, what are we? Where where are we going next? Are we done with uh, uh, the tour of uh, the Falucan Pax Uh We almost are. Let's head uh, a little bit to the southeast, and we'll finish up in the actual uh, town hall of Pax Lair, and we'll give um, oh, yeah. and we'll give we'll give more people a chance to uh, explain a little bit more about uh, their roles in Pax Lair before we move on to Pax Oku. Of uh, particular interest would be uh, how we try to defend the area, and uh, and Elijah Cross can probably talk about that a little bit from our town hall area here. So come on into the town hall. I can't believe I, I, I forgot about this building. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness. I thought the, um, you know, the, well, it looks like an amphitheater to me. Um, you know, uh, I just thought it was such a wonderful job the way they had set it up. I was like, wow, I am totally impressed. So as we get settled in here, uh, we'll ask um, Elijah Cross to go ahead and explain a little bit more about uh, how we attempt to defend uh, Pax Lair against intruders and people who like to do ill will against the neutral city here. Go ahead. Go ahead, Elijah. Well... Things uh, have been pretty quiet, are usually pretty quiet uh, lately. Uh, we, do get, we do get occasional attacks. We hold uh, town meetings here once every other week. Uh, and some people know that we do. And so they'll come, and, and, and it's actually quite fun. But uh, we do get frequent attacks uh, at times. Uh, we just try to... Uh, Band together, band together as best we can. Uh, call in for help if we can. Uh, we have we have several uh, structures, several buildings in the area where we can uh, defend from if we can get to those buildings. They're uh, designed for for PvP. Uh, but for the most part, the alliance uh, has been uh, in charge of. Uh, Keeping meetings safe, keeping Pax Slayer, and uh, not just Pax Slayer itself, but uh, Pax Oku uh, and other uh, outposts of Pax uh, safe from attack from either players or monsters uh, that venture into town. But uh, in my guild, uh, PV Paladins of Virtue, we uh, we are a citizen citizen guild. We're not actually an alliance guild, uh, but we, uh, our main goal is, our main and, and uh, main goal is to defend all PAX communities uh, from, from any, any threat. And we work with the alliance, uh, while we don't have a lot of the features uh, that the alliance has, we're a little bit limited there, but we, we still manage, we still, uh, try to do our best and keep everything safe for everybody here. Well, that's amazing. And do you, when you actually get raided, um, what, 
do you, when you have these meetings, because I know this is a problem that uh, I get sometimes myself uh, on my own shard, um, when we're trying to hold guild meetings, for instance, and we have uh, just people that, you know, they see there's a meeting going, therefore there's a lot of people, and they come camping hoping to get some PvP action, and therefore, um, you know, driving us a little away from what we're actually trying to accomplish, which is to get this meeting done. And so, would you, do you mostly go ahead and go through with your meeting and then go kick some butt, or <laughs> do you put things on hold and go teach them a lesson and then resume once we're done? Well, that, that really depends on how uh, fierce the attack is. If it's just a couple of people, uh, uh, a few people might leave the meeting to try to go take care of them, and uh, we'll either pause the meeting and uh, continue when they return. Or if it's a larger scale attack, usually what will happen is uh, someone usually will, will gate out uh, people who can't fight uh, to keep them safe, and then we will... Uh, uh, put the meeting on hold, so to speak, and try to take care of the take care of the problem. And meetings usually last about an hour or so. Uh, we sometimes try to finish up after after the attack if it doesn't take too long. But uh, but usually it, it works pretty well. Uh, a lot of times the meeting will get infiltrated. People will come in and uh, uh, and and stealth uh, hide and attack, but Things get a little bit hairy then, but uh, we, we always seem to manage. And so, is it, well, your guild, your, I'm sorry, you're not a guild, but your town is, you know, as, as we mentioned uh, a number of times, composed of various guilds. But what kind of guilds do you, are really part of it? Are they mostly um, role player guilds and, um, you know, crafter guilds and such, or do you actually have a number of guilds that are, um, you know, more PvP oriented and such? I think, uh, I really think Winfield is probably better suited to, to answer that question. Winfield? I'm sorry, I was uh, baiting my hook here, getting ready to move out to a, to a place in the stream, so I kind of missed the question. Sorry. Well, uh, the question I was asking is, since your town is composed of various guilds, and Paxlayer is, well, this one, the Falucan Paxlayer, obviously being in Faluca, has a lot of PvP going on. And so, do you, um, are you, the guilds composing Paxlayer mostly um, role-playing and crafter and such type of guilds, or do you actually have a number of guilds that are more PvP-oriented? Basically, what's happened over the last, well, actually many years, uh, we've had people from all walks of life. Uh, some wanted to come in and mainly get involved in crafting, others in quests, and probably uh, a good 30% of the people involved want to be involved in combat. So we do have uh, people who come to Paxlair. Paxlair itself is not a huge, you know, great combat uh, guild or town or whatever you want to call it within the realm, there's a lot of outside guilds who uh, we will work with in defending the area, but there are a substantial number of people who want to participate in the Paxlair Feluca environment from a uh, combat point of view. We at one time had a guard, which turned into a red guard, which creates a cyclical effect of when you bring in more guards, then you have more attackers come in. And then eventually when you say, okay, I disband the guards, which we had to do at one time a few years back, then the attackers left. So it's all very much cause and effect in this environment of the uh, combat situations. And um, we just deal with it uh, monthly, daily, as we can, trying to form an alliance that is robust enough to to basically deal with situations, use our government, our the leadership of the different guilds that we're involved with. Uh, we, in all cases, try to maintain absolute respect for people who are defending or attacking. Our intent is not to uh, to bring anybody through the uh, through any disrespectful means. So that's a uh, it's kind of a half and half thing with as far as the interest in combat. Alrighty. Well, time is actually flying, so I believe um, if we're done touring um, 
uh, Paxlair and Fell, we can maybe move on to uh, Paxlair in Takuno because I do have quite a few questions I want to ask after we're done touring um, the other town, uh, mostly about your, uh, your government and, uh, you know, your relationship with other guilds and such. All right, very so. good. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, head outside. That would be easiest to get us all on our way, and we'll open a gate to the Takuno area. Um, give me just a quick second. I have to run to the tower. <laughs> I actually uh, left my poor little horsey there, um, and I think it's not very happy with me right now because I've been neglecting it quite a bit. And I do believe uh, Shadow Mist is also not looking overly happy at the moment. Oops. <laughs> Alrighty. And Visago, I do have something to return to you because you were such a gentleman. And I believe you already went through the gate. So here I am. Here we are in uh, Takuno. And uh, uh, we're actually really close to Zento. Oh, the town itself, that is. Well, it looks All like right. we actually got we got split up a little bit. So some of us are in Paxoku and not sure where the rest of you are. <laughs> well, at least Shadow Mist <laughs> made its way here with the rest of us. Yay for me for remi reminding Garrett about his poor little... Uh, Beautiful pet, actually. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, and so this building, the Pax Oku City Hall. So this is the, the building we're standing in front of right now. And uh, also has its own really nice amphitheater. I mean, I have, I have to say, without shame, well, you know, I do have no shame whatsoever that I know somebody who is going to be copying the architecture of some of these buildings because you guys did an amazing job designing them. All right, we'd like to go ahead and let uh, Viceroy Gareth, who is the Viceroy of Pax Oku, uh, lead around this area. Get everyone that gets tired of listening to me. Okay, I'll take over. Oh, my God, don't sound so enthusiastic. I don't want to talk. I just want to sit here and look pretty. How about you do okay. both? Okay, uh, this is basically just the city hall that we run everything out of for our meetings. Um, it switches back and forth each week between Pax Lair and Pax OQ. Um, upstairs, I built the meeting hall because Winfield wanted a place where everyone could go to meet. Downstairs is my private office, which I'm never at, so don't go looking for me there. Uh, basically, the story is uh, a house blew down over here during a hurricane coming off the ocean, and Illish was nice enough to throw down a little plat for me. And we built the house, and all of a sudden, an underground waterway blew up through the top of it and flowed down to the BLT. So we had our little peasants construct a way to keep the water in one area, so we made a big old waterfall out of it. It's wonderful. Um, the waterfall connecting the two buildings like this, it's just its really cool. It is very, very, very cool. Um, all the people who, uh, well, people weren't here with us, um, you know, whenever you have some, some time to kill, you definitely want to, you know, make a little tour here on Chessie, um, Takuno Island. Come uh, just, uh, I believe we're just on the western co corner of uh, Zanto by the road, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you can uh, come uh, just north of the gate. There we go. So you can uh, come and check it out. It's really, it's uh, actually worth the detour. And now Viceroy has a question. Go ahead. 
Yes, actually, I got a comment, and it seems like there's, uh, I'm looking at this building, and like you say, the, the two houses look like they're interconnected. And what we're looking at here is a waterfall that's just spilling down into another house right next to it and everything, and it looks like it's just all one part of, it looks like it's just one house, and it looks like there's been a great deal of interest on the U-Haul boards and everything, with uh, players looking at, in EMs and, you know, in GMs uh, looking for houses that are interconnected like this, and like on um, Baja, I think there's like four houses that are interconnected, and I just want to quickly, you know, kind of like describe this to people out there, because it's got like a Japanese theme to it, and it also has this waterfall, which goes along with the uh, Japanese theme, if you ask me. So it's got really good serenity to it and everything. And I, I do encourage you all to come check it out sometime if you should be, ever be on Chesapeake and come through uh, the K Takuno area and uh, check it out. Just create a newbie character and uh, come say hi to uh, <laughs> Gareth. And uh, and uh, he can just sit there and look pretty <laughs> sitting on his throne. <laughs> Head, uh, Garrett. Now, see, it only took, it actually took about three to four, actually maybe five days for me to actually build this whole entire thing. So I just couldn't get it right. So if you're ever going to do waterfalls, you really got to cover it up with walls, because if you don't cover it, it just doesn't even look right. Just so y'all know. Well, it's, it's really, it's amazing. It's really beautiful. Lucy, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to add that if you come by here looking for Gareth, I can always find him because I'm his um, house stalker. So I know where he is at all times. Well, that's really good to know. Now you're in trouble, young man. Yeah, so just ask me and I'll know where he is. Even uh, a gammon thinks... Uh, you know, the house is pretty cool. Oh my goodness, you didn't have to bat him so brutally. You could have just shown him the door. There is a well, door. There know, is the walkway. They're big. It's not their fault they're um, this ugly. I mean, the gods decided to make them this way. It's not their fault. Alrighty. And so, um, so let's continue with our tour of um, Pax Oku. Where are we going next? Uh, next, we'll go to the BLT. It's right next door. And so, what is the BLT? Well, I picked out a name well, I, pick I had. Oops. I picked out a name because of the blue lamppost that I had put up there. And then I think, I believe it was Neo who goes, let's just call it the BLT, Bacon, Lettuce, and Tomato. So that's where it's got its nickname from. That's exactly what I first thought. I was like, uh, bacon, lettuce, and tomatoes? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> That's really what he wanted to say. But the um, house sign actually reads differently and makes a bit more sense. The Blue Light Tavern. And so um, I guess this is why people were commenting a lot about you uh, being a uh, lost in certain place with a drink in your hand. Could that be your favorite hiding place, which is why we can't find you in your office? Yeah, so this is where I hide, actually. And so do you have a lot of uh, meetings going on here, or rather, not so much meetings, but do people get together here and uh, just hang out and shoot, and, uh, shoot the breeze? <laughs> I'm sorry, I ended up sitting on Elijah. I totally did not mean to, um, but I figured that the, the, the um, oh my God, the stool was a little too comfy. Sorry about that. Yeah, this is where mostly people hang out. They live here in Paxoku, just sit around and talk, which is what I mostly like to do, and just sit around and look at it. But um, this house has actually been through about 250,000 different designs. You can probably look on the Paxlayer pages. They probably have a bunch of pictures of different looks of it. This one's actually been the longest standing one of two and a half months. I think it's been this way. That is quite a few aquariums you've got there. Um, I haven't even gotten the first one myself. I need to get busy on that. They just call my house the ever-shifting houses. Alrighty, and uh, uh, 
Okay. Um, and so from here, where are we going? I, I really just have to say this again. This waterfall is just the bomb. Like, I know we've already said this, but if you have, if you have not been here, you've got to come and, and, and take a look at this. And next we move on to the old Paxoku City Hall, which has been taken over by an evil queen, Queen Sarah. Uh, you are sounding like you're fading away. Don't run so far away from us. Um, basically, the story behind this was it was our main city hall, and then it got taken over by an evil queen who turned it into this evil, ugly-looking thing. And we still have yet to purify it after we got rid of her. Oh, wow. This is awesome. The garden statues at the entrance. Wow, I am impressed. Did I tell you that I'm going to be copying a bunch of stuff? <laughs> I have no shame, just in case I had not mentioned it. That's okay. Just remember, I'm the first one. <laughs> oh, you will get proper credit. Have no fear. You know, this is a beautiful evil, <laughs> if there is such a thing. And so, whatever happened to the queen? Um, she was banished through the lava pit, which is a gateway to her hellish dimension. Sorry, I'm not allowed, I don't know if I'm allowed to say hell on here. Well, I said it twice. So, we got rid of her that way, and we haven't actually seen her since. Well, you know how it is. Um, nightmares have a way of just popping back up when you least expect it. So I wouldn't be overly surprised if she, uh, if she were to uh, reappear on your doorsteps again. Well, I used to be married to her, so I'm kind of going to expect it. Oh, my goodness. And now we're headed to... Where are we headed? Ah, uh, the tea house. This will be all Winfield, because I don't know the main story behind it. Okay, very good. The, uh, the tea house was one of the first buildings that were uh, placed on the day that Takuno opened. And it's a large place, and originally it just had a mirror image of the Spring of Courage from Pax Lair that we originally uh, were at. And it, too, got corrupted by evil in the area. But since then, with the uh, outstanding work of the Alliance and the uh, Questers, they were able to go ahead and cleanse the, the fountain in the area, and we built this tea house. Now, if we go outside, though, rather than inside, and go up to the roof, or actually behind the house, to the north side of the tea house, you will see that there is another balance another balance of Pax Lair, or in this case, balance of Pax Oku, which is standing out on this area, and the entire house inside is hidden, and all you can really see is the balance. Yes, I see it. If we hadn't already uh, lynched Viceroy, I'd probably try to get people to put him some more pain. This is a really this is really impressive. I don't know who designs all your uh, your houses, but kudos because this is like wow. And over here to the east is an evil building. Again, it's just like the towers in uh, Pax Lair and Feluca. We have the Mage Tower, which is the main government building, which is on the east side, balanced by the balance of Pax Lair with a, a twin tower on the other side, which is more good in nature, or I'm sorry, more evil in nature. In this case, this building next to the tea house is owned by, owned by the evil character, the evil person, Valtos. And we're not sure what he plans to do here. The, this uh, building kind of erupted with, a, uh, with an area of fire. And uh, Valtos is associated with 
the gatekeeper, that quest entity that we had talked about a little bit earlier, and we're not sure what uh, the gatekeeper or Valtos really plans to do in this area. Has anyone um, had a chance to talk to him to try and find out what, at least try to approach him and maybe get a bit of an insight as to what he might want to be doing? About every time anyone tries to approach him or he appears, he will uh, lead people off on some adventure where usually half of the party will end up dying somewhere. Very challenging uh, things that, uh, that he does. He's extremely evil. His philosophy is to bring evil out of the underworld through his gate that he is constructing here. And the gatekeeper apparently is trying to keep him in balance uh, so that he cannot do that. But when he is successful, uh, he will appear here or in other places throughout the realm. Uh, usually we've seen with the gatekeeper, and the gatekeeper will try to coach people on what they have to accomplish to defeat him because uh, they are arch enemies, the Gatekeeper and Valtos. Well, it's a good thing to know. Next time uh, I run into him, I will make sure not to, uh, to just follow um, his lead into what will more than likely be certain death. I'm kind of I'm weak and delicate. <laughs> and so, where are we going next? All right, we'll, uh, all right, we'll, we'll go ahead and head, we'll go ahead and, head, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go we'll go ahead and head over to the other side of the tea house, uh, which is a quest house that Alish Lareel is building. So Pax Lair has two primary locations within Chesapeake, Pax Lair Feluca and Pax Oku Takuno, and in both places is a quest-oriented environment that uh, people can get involved in quests uh, within their guilds or perhaps with the EM quests as well. And I'll let Alish Lareel explain this one. Um, I kind of ran all over the place and I am somewhat lost now. Um, hold on a second. Right now I am right in front of the um, city hall. So I guess I have to run east, right? Right, east, yep. east a little bit north. Sorry, this is from hanging around um, Viceroy too much. He turned me into a newbie. There we are. Oh, this is very pretty. Very nice Alvin uh, design. And so this is the... So what is this exactly? Uh, it's really not complete yet. Uh, I'm experimenting with designs at the moment. Uh, actually, you can't get to anywhere in the house yet. Uh, but uh, it will be a, a quest center for uh, uh, for Pax Oku. Um, uh, I'm thinking about connecting it with a quest so, uh, until that time. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's supposed to be a place of good, but and actually neutrality is. Uh, I hadn't quite figured out the ethics of all of it yet, but uh, I'll let y'all know later. Alrighty, and uh, so this would somewhat be the uh, some kind of the equivalent of the uh, the quest house in uh, Faluka Pax. There is that correct? Uh, yes, it, it will be uh, uh, once I'm uh, finished designing. Uh, I haven't been quite happy with anything I've done yet. So. Um, but it will be sort of a, a, a safer area for people to uh, to contact me or the, the guild and the city to uh, to get involved in quests. Well, you may not be overly happy with what you've done, but I think it looks pretty nifty. Well, thanks. You're quite welcomed. And so, where are we going to next? Maybe we should hit up uh, Elijah's PV house. That should be the next one down the road to the southeast. It's just too funny. You guys should see us just like this group of people all running all over the place. 
<laughs> it's like we're running a, some kind of a marathon. Um, so go ahead, Winfield. Yeah, just one quick comment as we as we run around these areas. Um, part of the part of the uh, player town philosophy is you, you get a get an area where people can work together, and um, with with a diversified number of interests. Uh, you've seen the Pax Lair environment, the Pax Oku environment, and um, each each building and its masters of those buildings basically tries to bring to the community something new and something different. There's a rune building here in Pax Oku, which we may get a chance to take a look at, and uh, people in this area can become part of Pax Oku or Pax Lair uh, at their own willingness and just kind of incorporate into a, a town environment. We like to give a town a feeling of geography, so it is a physical place not just somebody, a whole pl bunch of places spread out where you can get to through recalling off of Arun and that sort of thing. So I'll turn this back over to Gareth. Who's going to turn yeah. it over to Elijah? Well, I was just going to comment uh, when t about what you just said, Winfield. Um, it's I, I just thought it was great. As a matter of fact, all your houses are really close to each other, so you do have the town feeling. Um, and I'm sure it must not have been quite easy uh, securing all these uh, these buildings um, next to each other in this in an area like this. But uh, go a go ahead, Elijah. Yeah, about about getting buildings this close together, it's it's never an easy thing. Uh, you have to be ever watchful. Uh, you have to constantly be looking at uh, house conditions. Uh, so yeah, that 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 can be tricky. Uh, but it's all worked out good in the end. But anyway, right now we're standing at the uh, administrative headquarters of my guild, the uh, Paladins of Virtue. Uh, this is where you'll find me most often. Um, I also have a keep in the East Meadow in Pax Lair. It's uh, just north, probably north northeast of uh, downtown Pax Lair. Uh, but this is where. Uh, most of our meetings, our guild meetings are held. Uh, we uh, are currently rebuilding, but uh, we, we've also recently been asked by uh, Viceroy Gareth to, uh, PV has, to uh, uh, police uh, Pax Oku as well as uh, Pax Lair. So, uh, and I'm sure in just a few moments you'll see the new guard uh, post we have just uh, southwest of here, but this, like I said, this is where we hold our meetings. Uh, my main office is here, uh, so uh, anyone. Oh, and there's also a book on the steps that, uh, if anybody would like to read, uh, I highly suggest it. Uh, but yeah, this is this is uh, not our official guild house, but um, I, I I do call it our administrative headquarters because that's where I am mostly. Okay, and so the Paladins of Virtue, who, by the way, are recruiting, hint, hint, <laughs> are um, basically the defense of Paxlayer, um, all guilds um, confounded, is that um, what we are to understand? So basically, any other guild that are part of Paxlayer, if they ever needed um, someone to come defend them, then the Paladins of Virtue would come and do this? Uh, yes. Uh, any, alliance, any other Alliance Guild would respond. Uh, uh, Paladins of Virtue, like I said, is not in the Alliance. We're a citizen guild, but we do act uh, a lot in the same way as the Alliance, uh, protecting Paxlair citizens, Paxlair communities. Uh, but yeah, so we will uh, we'll defend any any uh, we're, we're kind of uh, you might call us uh, zealots. Uh, we're we're uh, fairly righteous. We have a little trouble with evil every now and then. You know, with with Pax Lair being neutral, we get kind of there's little gray areas, but uh, we uh, uh, we we do get along. Uh, we find ways to get along, so it all works. But yeah, we'll we'll come to uh, the aid of any any uh, Paxlayer citizen. 
good start. And uh, now that we have visited, visited uh, this building, where are we going next? I'm, <laughs> I'm not only curious to see, uh, you know, all that's going on, but uh, I'm also um, I'm looking forward to asking you a bunch of more questions, especially about your government and alliances. So uh, we are going to have to uh, move a little bit quickly through the remaining uh, buildings to be visited so that we can cover a few more questions. So um, go ahead, Garrett. Okay, I can do this real fast. This is Pax Lair Gardens. It's owned by Windmere. It's going to have a museum on top. Okay, next house. Oh my goodness, nuh uh. Uh uh. <laughs> so you're going to give me a proper visit of this house regardless. Except Jeez, that quick. garden the rule. Faster, not uh, Speedy Gonzalez. So, um, so this house is what exactly? Go ahead, Winfield. Yeah, this house is uh, owned by Windmere. Uh, Windmere was the Lady of the Spring who uh, brought the waters to to the Feluca Paxlair environment. But what she's establishing in this building is a museum as well as a garden area for everybody to use. One of the things that she is extremely working on, you asked earlier about some of the quests that had happened in the past, and right in front of me is a book of Galen Solstar. And this accumulates a lot of Galen's uh, activities many years ago. And Galen, as best we could tell, was one of the seer characters and had to do with a telescope and a meteor that hit uh, the Feluca area way back before Trammell even existed. So this museum is to document within our realm much information about quests, much information about people who have gone away from the past, some of our founders of Pax Lair, or even founders of various cities throughout the Shard that have, that have gone away. So uh, that's basically the essence of this building. Awesome. Unfortunately, I don't have access to that book. You don't like me. This is so me. But <laughs> I will come visit it later when um, it is uh, completed. But you can tell her on my behalf that garden rocks. It was submitted into uh, one of the contests that were held, and it didn't win, but uh, it probably got a notable mention of some kind. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. It is very nice. And now we're looking at the Lucky Fox Temple. And so what is this exactly, besides being a temple? Um, it's a temple. <laughs> Please do not be so talkative. It's uh, run by the Fox Guild, I believe. This temple is um, dedicated to uh, the god or goddess Inari, which has to do with Katsuni in this area. So this is a particular place where you can leave food and hopefully ward off the evil rampages of the, uh, the monsters that uh, tend to plague this place. We haven't proven whether the, the mystery of this has really uh, taken effect to protect us, but we welcome people to go ahead and give food here and see what kind of long-term effect we could have in the area of keeping the monsters out. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the temple's, um, oh my goodness, um, offering altar well, um, well, well fed, if I can use that word. And moving right along, where are we going next? Back the other way, Winfield. Okay, probably the best thing to do is uh, there's a lot more in Paxoku to see. A uh, lot more buildings, always construction. So let's head over to the, uh, the tea house, to our alliance chamber, uh, which is on the second floor inside. And uh, we'll uh, cover a lot more questions about uh, what you're interested in for the Paxlair government, the alliance, uh, and the types of things we've done and plan to do in the future. All righty. Um, 
Uh, oh my God. <laughs> Wow, we uh, we have picked up quite a number of people along our tour. <laughs> we started off, we were like maybe, um, we were what, seven or eight people? Now we have a good, what, 20 people here? Just uh, running around doing the tour with us. Let me grab a seat here. Whew, that feels good. Been running around a lot today. But, okay, so. Now, um, we've seen all these buildings on, uh, on both, you know, both in Feluca and here in Takuno. And you've talked about all these, um, these, uh, these guilds that are part of it. But how do you actually get um, a government working for this? Because I think the w number one thing is, you know, to get a government going, you need to you know, to have elections and, you know, and so on and so forth. As I understand it, yourself, um, Winfield, as the mayor of, um, of Paxlair, you're pretty much the, uh, the highest ranking officer, I would, as I understand it, of Paxlair, and you have a limited duration to your, um, to your, the time of your, you will be in service. Um, how do elections go? Does anybody in in Paxlair? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm asking a bunch of questions, but does anybody in in uh, Paxlair, any member of Paxlair, is any a member of Paxlair eligible to become uh, mayor? And and basically, just how does is this all work? Well, basically, we uh, we are not a democracy. We really do not have elections. That may sound surprising, but uh, in this realm. There is a lot of uh, chaos at times and a lot of people coming through. So what we've, uh, what we've established is Paxlair is a monarchy and I'm the mayor who makes the ultimate decisions for the Paxlair environment. I delegate various things to the viceroys of our locations. I'm also the viceroy of Paxlair Feluca. I'll be looking for someone to fill that role in the near future, just like Gareth is handling Pax Oku, basically the mayor of Pax Oku. So the stability of our government first comes from somebody, uh, myself and a few others, who have basically really committed themselves in the long term to keep this town going and, um, and making good sound decisions very respectful, have high integrity in all those decisions. So it's really a, a matter of, of leadership and having consistency in that leadership as we go. Now my term, we are establishing that the mayor's term should only be one year. Um, it does become uh, very time consuming and I will look forward to appointing the next mayor of Pax Lair come January 19th at our next anniversary, our eighth anniversary. Um, and it will be an appointment by me. Now, to keep the stability of Paxlair over the long term, I'm also the main caretaker of Paxlair. So, I don't know if we want to say I'm the owner of it, but the idea is, is to, to keep Paxlair permanent for the long term. This, this is the only thing I do in, in these kinds of realms. <clears throat> and uh, that, that's how we try to keep things going. Uh, Towns that have perhaps built up based on one guild or one leader and that leader fades away, then the town fades away. I've tried to instill this as uh, I'm committed to stay here for the very long term to keep many, many people involved and ultimately give other people opportunities to lead to Paxlair and uh, see what they do with it. Viceroy has a question. Go ahead. Yes, uh, basically I'm wondering what kind of, what is the criteria you use whenever you're appointing a viceroy, and have you ever considered maybe having the viceroys elected rather than appointed? The criteria we use for the viceroy is that I have to have 100% confidence in that person. Uh, I usually somehow get that 100% confidence through working with them for several years, or they're consistent activities with me within the realm. Uh, that's basically the criteria, so it's, it's a personal judgment on my part with a lot of 
input from all the citizens, all of the alliance on what uh, what someone uh, may uh, have merits or or not so many merits with them. So that's the kind of thing. As far as elections, I do believe that uh, there will be areas of Paxlair. Maybe there will be one of the locations uh, of Paxlair that would have its viceroy elected. Uh, for example, if Viceroy Gareth, uh, in his term of one year, would like to hold elections, I would support that. And then we'll just see how it plays out and runs. And do you already have, um, like you said, it's already in January that you will be electing um, the new mayor, um, or rather appointing, since it's not through an election process. Um, do you already have the next person in mind, and is it solely your decision, or do the, um, the other viceroys have a say in the matter? Um, it is solely my decision but I, I take all the input. I think I've hopefully established credibility with everyone that I will make a good decision um, and pass the reins of, of mayorship on to someone who will keep the stability, keep the neutrality, keep the involvement of, of all of the different areas of Chesapeake Shard that want to be involved in Paxlair and maintain the integrity of Paxlair in the long run. Uh, if that mayor happens to run off and go amok or disappear, I, as the, uh, I guess, the ultimate caretaker, can step in and appoint someone else or take the reins back myself. Uh, I don't think that really disturbs anybody. We've been able to do this for seven years without any real difficulties. And as far as who I have in mind, uh, right now I do not have anyone specifically in mind. I am looking at the, uh, the people, many of the people in this room, to see if uh, they would like to do it and see whether they would... Uh, have the necessary one-year commitment uh, to this to be very fairly active every day and um, and we'll just have to wait to see and so well in your case as the main caretaker you would you could basically step back right in as mayor if the need arise but could one person because the term is one year but could somebody who had been mayor before, um, you know, get a second term back to back or just um, get uh, a second term at a later date, say, um, you know, you were mayor in 2000 and then you were not in 2001, but then you were in 2002 and so on and so forth. Would that be possible? Oh, absolutely. Um, in fact, I've been mayor twice now. Uh, my first term was up through about I think 2001 or 2002, and then uh, Mayor Minsk, or actually uh, uh, Don Martin, became the mayor, and uh, he disappeared in a, uh, a strange quest that happened with him, and so I had to go ahead and, and get uh, another appointment for a mayor. Mayor Minsk took over for a few years, and um, then when she, it was, when she chose to go ahead and uh, relinquish the reins, uh, we, we tried to figure out where we were in the status of Paxlair at the time, and the best decision at that time was for me to, to take things over again for this one-year period to build things up. The real, Takuno was opening at the time, so there was a lot of uh, things to do and uh, a lot of guidance to give out and a lot of ideas to give out and interest. And uh, so people can come back if they've been a good mayor before. It all depends on how well they are committed and how well they are balanced to the ideals of Paxlair. Thank you. Um, Vice Roy, go ahead. Sure. i got another question for you. I'm kind of curious as to what is the purpose of uh, basically appointing or electing another mayor, and what will happen to you? Where will you be at? I mean, what will your role other than caretaker, define caretaker? Will you still be having a presence about Paxlayer, or are you going to go on like a vacation or a journey? And second, and um, and. The next part of my question is, is also, have you ever had anybody who has ever tried to basically create a revolt against maybe your regime or your authority with Paxlayer or anything like that? Well, basically, when I step down as Paxlayer, I, I stay as caretaker. Caretaker meaning making sure that certain sky pages and information services continue to support Paxlayer, make sure that the, the buildings that... Uh, 
that I'm in control of are maintained from now until the end of time. But my intent is to let the new mayor run things. The new mayor will have ideas. The new mayor will want construction changes, will want uh, to be involved in combat in a different way that I have been. And I want to really open it up to the new mayor to do that. I will be an advisor to that mayor and, um, and uh, just offer advice. I won't sit on a council. I won't vote. Uh, basically, I'll be on my fishing trip six days out of seven and show up to the meetings and just listen to how things are going and make some comments here and there. As far as uh, conducting a coup or something against the Paxlair government, uh, things have been attempted in the past. Uh, it creates a lot of drama and controversy within our, our area. People would try to lobby to take over the, uh, the Paxlair government. They have been unsuccessful, mainly because of the stability of the people uh, around and within Paxlair, uh, maintaining the common goals of Paxlair. But when a coup or unrest occurs, the mayor must take notice and try to fix or change things and take those into account. But no, you, you can't really overthrow the government. Does that answer both your questions, Vice, or do you have another one? I believe you're done. Okay. Um, now, the other question I have for you, um, it's, it actually concerns your alliances. Now, um, Paxler, would you, it, it is a town, but then it is basically a town um, of allied guilds, is that correct? And which guilds are currently part of your um, official alliance? We have a, an alliance of about uh, 17 guilds on the alliance. Let me just call them mechanics. Uh, we have Citizens Guild, two Citizens Guilds who are not part of the Alliance, uh, which is the Paladins of Virtue and, believe it or not, the Orcs of Paxlair. Uh, but within the Alliance, uh, some guilds are large, some are small. And the intent of the Alliance is full spectrum, people in, interested in combat to people interested in crafting or adventures. Uh, the Alliance uh, has its defensive role, as Elijah has, has spoken about. It has a role of communication very quickly and to keep people in touch with each other. With so many people of Pax Lair in so many different locations, not just our towns, but they have the guild houses in other locations, they're out crafting somewhere else, it is so hard to, to reach them at a moment's notice to tell them there's an activity going on. So one of the things we do with the Alliance is to have rapid communication. Um, and that's one of its primary intents. If there were other ways within this realm to have rapid communication with people without having to physically form an alliance, we would be able to reach out to a lot more people. And hopefully someday the gods will create you know, such a capability without all the other, other features of the alliance. We do deal with a lot of other towns where we need to talk to them quickly. Uh, when things are happening, uh, a, uh, an EM event is happening or something, and we try to, to keep people informed. So the Alliance is really multi multifaceted of about 17 guilds, of which about 12 of them are active. And um, through, I, I can't really go ahead and list all of them, but uh, some of the members in this room right now are part of that Alliance, but that can easily be looked up through the, uh, the SkyPage system. And um, how does one actually join your alliance? Let's say, um, you know, some, some guild, especially with all the people listening to uh, this interview right now, and they decide, um, you know, packs there sound like extremely cool, and we would like to join the town. How would they go about it? And what are the criteria for um, a guild to be considered um, to be allowed into your alliance? The alliance uh, selection is, again, through me. I'm the alliance uh, chairman, I guess you would call it, or the, the mayor of the alliance. The alliance is really having to do with, uh, if a guild wants to join, it's a matter of uh, trust. It's a matter of a, a, uh, a record over a period of time throughout the realm that they've been involved in, what their intentions are. We do wish to avoid guilds joining the alliance that just want to infiltrate the alliance and create havoc. Uh, in the past, we have, we have not had any real problems in the alliance, 
But we've had problems with uh, people in Paxlayer infiltrating and creating a lot of chaos. And then the next thing you know, we're spending more time on that and trying to sort things out than to just trying to do productive things. So we are a bit selective. Uh, Gareth will say that it costs 10 million gold to join, but uh, that's not my policy. Uh, and uh, so people just need to approach me. Their guild needs to have some kind of a track record. Uh, I will meet with their guild masters. We'll, uh, I'll get a sense of, of integrity and respect and uh, see what, they, uh, what their essence is throughout the realm. Um, and uh, I have actually uh, Lucy. We haven't heard from you much, so um, go ahead, Lucy. You wanted to say something? Yes. Yeah, I just want to add a little bit more about the alliance. Um, it was it, the alliance it really helps you know people from all areas to come together. It was actually through the alliance that I got involved in Feluca, and that it's where I am, where I am today, because I was formerly in um, KOTR. And, which is more of a tram guild, but um, through the alliance allowed me to go with them, with AKB, to go on spawn hunts with them, to go out and try different new things, and because of that, they got me involved in Feluca, and, you know, like I said, that's where I am today. So um, I recommend that anybody, if they can, to even, you know, try to, enjoy, to um, join the alliance, because it is, it's a very good group. In fact, I even miss not even being part of it anymore. Well, you are a friend of the Alliance, so in a way... Yeah, I'm yeah. always a friend, but it is different than being a friend and being an actual mentor. Quite true. Viceroy, you have a question. Go ahead. Yes, it's actually about something totally different about, you know, the whole Alliance system and everything. I'm kind of curious, because I was, as we was going from house to house uh, during the tour and everything, I noticed that you guys had something that appeared, and based on your website, a postal system. Can you, would you care to explain how the postal system works and uh, who's in charge of that and how, you know, how effective is it really? We'll turn that over to Gareth. Uh, the postal, All right. postal service, um, basically we had everyone line up mailboxes on the corner of their house. It was comprised of a music stand and a wooden box dyed red. Um, basically what they would do, we had a mail service set up here in Pax OQ, but some other houses took took over the area, so we had to move it and it got shifted around. I do plan to restart it. Basically what you do, you go to the mail system, you drop the books off, that's supposed to be a letter. And we had a few mailmen that had rooms to everyone's house that had a post box. And what it would do was we'd send out a weekly letter or some private mail. It worked out pretty well for a little bit until we lost the place to hold it at. So we're still looking for a place to reset it up. Okay. That is way cool. Um, I know we have been asking for the longest time for... Um, the gods, as you say so well, um, to give us a an actual mailbox, a real mailbox at home so that people can actually drop um, messages, items, or, you know, any, any of the thing that they could possibly drop for you at your house and that no one but the house owner would be able to pick up. So I think it's pretty nifty that you had your own little system going on there. Now, um, going back to our uh, to your relationship with other guilds, um, especially for uh, the uh, the Falukan side of Paxlayer, how do you how's your relationship with some of the uh, large Falukan guilds? Um, and I'm thinking about guilds such as uh, the Os Ex Machina and uh, Champs and such. Um, you know, it, they are. They do have a lot of PVPers, and it can make things a little um, heavy down there. Um, I'm mentioning these two mostly because I actually had interviews with both of them. But um, and you know, with every other um, fell guilds, I guess, especially red guilds, and you also mentioned you you even had um, relationship with the orcs. How do you work things out, especially for your non-PVP? oriented characters um, that that venture in uh, fell pack layer. Well basically the um, it, it's all really 
part of diplomacy. I mean, there's within the realm here, when you're immersed in this realm, you're dealing with, with people, dealing with the champ's leadership or the ex-leadership, and getting them to understand the role of Paxlair as a neutral location. Now, either one of those guilds can come in and attack. Either one of those guilds can come in and defend the area. Paxlair Feluca is a point target, point location, very hard to defend. They know where to find people when we have events and things like that. But it's, it's really kind of at a macro level that I, I work with the different guilds. I'll even hang out at the U uh, Moongate and uh, try to sell my fish at the U Moongate, and I meet a lot of people. So working with different people throughout the realm really has to do with respect. Uh, we hold tournaments where they can come in and uh, cooperatively work in tournaments. But at the same time, the Paxler Feluca environment can also be something where many people in the Shard can set up for an area for attack and defense over a certain period of time. Uh, champs could come and defend for a while. Uh, the, the X Guild could come in and, and defend for a while. So it's really talking to me or a Minister of Defense, which I plan to appoint tomorrow at our Paxlair meeting, to help work through these kinds of topics so that everybody in the, uh, or as many people as possible, in the Flukin area can cooperate uh, with respectful measures and um, just kind of see where it goes from there. Well, that would definitely do it. It's always communications first. But uh, I believe Garrett wants to add something about this. Go ahead, Garrett. Actually, I just wanted to give a shout out to the X Guild because I love them all, and they can kill me anytime. <laughs> okay. Well, to uh, all the uh, X members that are listening to this interview, you have just been um, invited to collect insurance money off Garrett. So. Um, it's open season, people. Go ahead. Yes, you can always count on me to stir trouble. Now, um, so, um, oh my goodness, I'm really sorry. I'm having a blank right now, and this time I'm blaming Garrett for it. So, with all these alliances um, and whatnot, it's still, I guess my biggest problem here is with the, um, the whole... Um, election process. So I know you don't do elections, but how do you keep, like, do you ever have problem with the fact that certain people may end up always getting elected? Do everybody have a, an equal chance of any guild, even somebody from a new guild joining the alliance of ever being in a direction, um, a leadership power, I mean, position? I'm sorry, my English is going out the window as, as this interview is progressing. Yes, absolutely. Um, we have, I try to delegate a lot of things in different areas, a minister of defense or a minister of, uh, of quests, minister of adventures. Uh, these kinds of leadership positions would help people basically be nominated up to the mayor of Paxlair at some future point in time. It may take a year or two for, for people to, to get themselves involved and uh, develop the trust among the citizenry and the alliance of Paxlair, and, and they can basically move up the chain through various appointments. Uh, so anything is possible for, uh, for anyone to get involved, and uh, as long as we see a strong commitment and regular activity and good decisions, uh, anybody can aspire to the different ministry positions. And yes, it looks like Someone recommends we have a Ministry of Thievery, so maybe that could be wa worked into the uh, Ministry of Defense somehow. Thievery, huh. That's interesting. Uh, it always kind of makes me laugh when uh, um, the promotion of a, uh, well, technically evil um, type of lifestyle is, um, is being made. Viceroy, you have a question. Go ahead. Yes, I got a question, and it's actually two questions here. Uh, first of all, I want to know exactly how do you think you are able to keep a town like this 
thriving and going, and what do you think keeps people uh, involved with it and stuff like that? And secondly, uh, the second question is, uh, what do you think could be done on electronic arts part to enhance, you know, this type of community building uh, aspect to the game? Uh, you know, like, you know, me and you discussed something a little bit earlier off, off the air, and so I was kind of want giving you, trying to give you a chance to get that out there as well. Well, the way, way something like this, a uh, player run town, keeps going is uh, long-term stability, commitment by many people to keep it going, um, and consistency in what the town is all about. Uh, offering activities, there's really three things that, uh, that are kind of my theory of how to build a particular town within the realm. And that is, first of all, you have to have some kind of presence within the sky page world that is good enough for people to stay informed because not everyone can be in the realm all the time. So good concerted effort on that is number one. Number two is as you've established information about the town, you're able to then have events and announce those events and uh, quests and, and combat situations so that people will then go to your town and get involved. And then the third thing is what I would say three words, news, news, news. News about what you're doing, whether it be on the sky page of Stratix, whether it be an establishment uh, uh, information on the UO sky page, those kinds of things. You just have to get the news out. So a sky page regular events and news about what you do really creates the long-term abilities and stabilities. And, and what was the second half again? Five yes, the second Five question was, yeah, the second question was basically, you know, uh, you know, we had discussed earlier, what kind of tools do you think electronic arts could give you that might actually uh, promote community building within, you know, a shard like this? You know, uh, I think me and you discussed something offline earlier, so, you know, and you want to throw that out there by any chance? Certainly. Um, Paxler started way back in the year of the gods of 1998 because there was some interest in there. We weren't just a cluster of buildings, although we had a lot of buildings together. Things were created outside the buildings. Basically some features that said this was a town environment. As you walk through Pax Oku, other than mailboxes that you see at the various uh, houses, that's about the only thing you really get a feel that this is a, uh, a town environment when you see those things. Um, what I'm interested in is if the gods were ever willing was to have something called a town stone, a, a way that uh, different buildings through a town leadership of some kind would be able to, through the different house owners, would be able to connect their houses on a town stone. And that town stone could sit in the middle be placed near one of the, the town buildings outside as a monument or something uh, that people would see there is a town here of, of some area, uh, maybe five or six houses as a minimum to create that town stone. And if the town uh, buildings decay, then the town stone decays. The town stone could be used for, for voting on various issues. There could be a message board for the town citizenry that get assigned to the town. Uh, so back in the old days, towns came together because there was, there was physical geography that gave them a presence. Uh, these days, we don't necessarily have that. So if there's some ability to, to offer something where, that connects buildings together and makes some kind of a monument that says there's a town in this area, would be absolutely ideal. More people would create geographical locations where they, they go together rather than just uh, recalling around the shard and, and say they're part of a community or a town. Yeah. Well, that was something I was about to comment on because um, I remember um, a lot of the, uh, the player around towns that I have known in my uh, time in, uh, in this realm. And it, it's mostly been, one of the main complaints has been that it, it has been impossible for them to survive with the death of um, the seers. And, you know, very often I've been like, I cannot understand how, you know, the seers could be the only reason a um, um, you know, play around town fails to survive. And I think you guys have 
definitely demonstrated that you can survive even without it, even though you do have an insane um, number of blessings compared to many other towns. But, um, you know, at the same time, uh, we're looking at how you have this beautiful town in, in Takuno, and you are still very active in Feluca, whereas on most other shards I have visited, all the um, the fell based um, player towns are dead. Only things left are the blessings on the houses that that are still standing, and God knows so many of them collapsed over the years for um, lack of maintenance. And all the other towns have mostly tried to grow in um, in Trammel, and they just slowly but surely fell apart. So I think you you did. You did um, pinpoint one of the main problems, which is the need for commitment. And it is serious commitment from all the people that are in the town and, and also having a caretaker that simply won't give up on it. Um, and it is possible to accomplish something beautiful without actually having blessings. Uh, and I think you guys have proven that with, with your... Uh, your Takuno town, and even the one in Feluca, um, I'm looking at the designs themselves. It's just awesome. You know, I don't think any seer could have designed anything as beautiful as what you guys have done, both in Feluca and in, um, in Takuno. So um, the success of a town, in my humble opinion, is first and foremost, um, comes from the people that run this town. And you guys have just done an amazing job. Now, should um, the gods do something to help um, smaller towns get built? I have to agree, agree 100%. And you're right. It's it's really sad that your um, your current um, stable in in uh, in Feluca no longer has a stable master, and it would be nice to. Uh, if you could finally get one to get, get to get it working again and other such thing, I think it would be wonderful if every town, player run town, serious towns, could get a number of uh, basic blessings. But I talk too much, <laughs> so I'm going to be quiet now and uh, <laughs> move on to, um, to the next question. And this one is a bit more about um, what we you know, the latest addition to um, to our realm, and we have um, the discovery of Heartwood, among other things, and um, all these uh, fearless creatures that have uh, appeared as well, such as um, the peerless bosses and whatnot. How is that, um, do you think that has benefited your town as a whole, or as it had a very slight impact on, um, on the life in Paxlayer. Well, the, the advent of the, the coming of the elves, I think, has, has helped expanded opportunities for our town to go ahead and, and do things in many more different ways. Uh, the perils of the dungeons for the peerless uh, is something that we have to, again now, group together to survive. It's not something that one or two people can go out and accomplish. So I believe that the difficulties of the, uh, the areas that require group efforts is absolutely a step in the right direction by the gods. Uh, the, uh, the nature and the characteristics and the lore and legends of the elves, which is always building every day within these realms by the people, by the elves, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, going into it, I would love to see an elven town uh, be built within uh, Chesapeake or any other shard that is, uh, has the true elven nature, nature and they generate their lore and legends. So I think any kinds of uh, ability to have diversity within this realm, whether it be more complicated adventures, more difficult adventures, or more meaningful types of people, an ability for people to, to be different types of people in this realm is, is absolutely the right way to go. Visago, you want to add something? Go ahead. 
Thanks. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'd like to, to chime in with Winfield about how the new bosses and new dungeons have caused people to have to come together and band together. Um, one of the things that we try to foster here is a sense of community, and with that community comes cooperation. And you can't do these, these new peerless bosses without that cooperation. So having them there has really helped add a sense of that. Um, people now can band together to a common goal, and they can strike out uh, knowing that the people going with them have some kind of bond together, uh, some kind of history together, and uh, it builds cooperation. I agree 100%. Vice Roy, go ahead. Yes, I actually wanted to ask uh, Mayor Winfield over here. Basically, would you like to basically, because we're quickly running out of time here, I was actually wondering if there was anything that you'd like to put out there, like any highlights or key points that you'd like to throw out there either to electronic arts that might be possibly listening or out to the players or, or something for people to think about just in general. Uh, do you have anything that you might want to say? Certainly. Um, in the early days of, of the realm, there was a lot of community involvement because we needed community to survive. Uh, these days in the realm, communities can be much smaller. But the real thing that goes beyond the abilities of, of regular people in this realm is, uh, is the ability to come together with ideas and do things. I have to lay a lot of credit to the entire Chesapeake community. The, uh, the regular events that are held, uh, the Red Wolf Cafe in Gildenfeld is an absolutely outstanding establishment, and I suggest you interview them sometime over by Scarabray. Um, the, uh, the quarterly events that are held Chesapeake-wide, and we've got an Oktoberfest coming up very soon, are the times when the community should be, uh, have the ability to come together. As far as the gods uh, helping us in the future, I think that as they continue to, to create more capabilities, more features, they should really also take a good hard look at how groups and guilds and player towns and communities are getting together or are not getting together as a community because the populace is what really drives uh, the interest within this environment. Um, and uh, not necessarily always the items that uh, are obtained out there. It's the intrigue. It's something special that can be done in this realm that cannot be done in other realms, and that's with the people being involved together. So hopefully with the event managers very heavily involved uh, with the community, not just with uh, a single event on a, on a weeknight or something, but to actually get around like we saw them today in our tour, to actually get around and meet the people, this is the kind of thing that I think the gods should also be striving for. I so totally agree. Um, and we do miss the presence of the Sears, and it was great having uh, these uh, two event moderators showing up um, tonight. Even just to say hi, bye, you know, it's just nice to know they're there. Um, and we are indeed running out of time. God, time flies when uh, we're having a great time. And um, I will ask you a uh, very last question before I uh, give you guys a moment for uh, your closing comment. And it is, um, what do you think, you know, what are your, what are your, God, how do I say this? What's in the future for Pax Lair? Um, what are your grant plans, hopes, and whatnot for your, your, uh, for your town? I would say the grand hopes is to uh, know Gareth is not blowing up Paxoku, uh, as he uh, just said in, inside the realm here. But uh, the goal of Paxlair is to continue as it has been, continue to be a stable town, a physical town, now in multiple locations. And if there are future locations uh, which have been talked about, I believe that uh, people of Paxlair will have interest in creating locations in those places, either as a separate town or as part of Pax Lair in itself. So uh, the future of Pax Lair is just to continue along its seven plus year history, to be here till year 16, uh, or whenever things you know, eventually end or whatever, uh, we're gonna be here and we're gonna try to involve as many people as we can. Well, I certainly do hope you guys will still be there. And frankly, um, I have good faith that you will be because you guys certainly seem to have 
the commitment and the dedication. Now, um, before you can all say your, uh, your uh, closing comment, Viceroy has his usual and famous question to ask, so go ahead, Vice. Yeah, I almost forgot this one. <laughs> ah, this is my question in which I ask everybody in which we ever have on Yale Radio for an interview and everything. And the question is, the infamous question, which is like the the question in which everybody knows me for, you know, that I always ask everybody. The question is, and I'm going to ask each and every one of you guys here, you know, that question. Basically, the question is, is if EA were to, you know, create a pre-UR shard, would you play on it? And if so, why? And if not, why? Uh, starting with Elijah. Well, I think, I don't think I would move there. I think I might play there. Uh, it would be nice. It would be really nice. Uh, I would never leave uh, Pax Lair or Pax Oku behind. Uh, but I, I probably would. I probably would go there and, and check it out and play some. All right. And uh, Gareth? Um, I would definitely go there and play, but the only thing I would do is hide by the door, so when they unlock it with the key, I'm going to run inside, grab all their stuff, and run back out. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty good response. And Eilish, I, I guess that's how you say it, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Eilish the real. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I came into the game uh, right around the, the the right around that time, but I'd probably play just for nostalgia's sake. But I definitely wouldn't leave Chesapeake for any reason. All right, and uh, Fasago. Uh, I probably wouldn't. I've gotten too used to the way things are now. Um, I like being able to, to go around not worrying about getting attacked at the crossroads or having my house lynched by people coming in and taking all my stuff that's not locked down uh, and all those other wonderful features that we had back then. Uh, there were fun times, but there were a lot of crazy times, too. Very good response. Go ahead, Winfield. Okay, hopefully I won't have to be the mayor next year. I'll be able to appoint someone else, so if such a place another part of the realm came about, I would probably keep an eye on Paxler here, continue to participate, but I'd be very interested in seeing how a player town or community could be created in such an environment. We, we did it back uh, in the old days of Paxler and had to deal with defense and had to deal with people stealing things out of the houses. So I would be very interested in working with people uh, who wanted to have maybe several towns put together for different uh, combat purposes or whatever and actually put on the map in that realm that there are specific player towns that have uh, come together and established themselves. All right. Uh, and Sakara, back over to you. All righty. Well, this concludes um, our interview with um, the, the guilds of Paxlayer. And um, I will give everyone a chance to say a little word, a little goodbye word. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to start with that. And, uh, no, actually, I'm going to ask you one last question. <laughs> and it's, uh, I guess I'll ask, ask you, Winfield, if uh, I believe you guys have um, a website that people can find out more, a lot more about Paxlayer and also if, uh, you know, people want to join Paxlayer or whatnot. And so if you would not like to give uh, the address so that people can go check it out. Certainly our Sky page is simply paxlair.com. It's P-A-X-L-A-I-R, means peace place. So paxlair.com is where we uh, exist in the Sky page world. There you go. And so now with the closing comments, we're going to go ahead first with you, Elijah, if you want to say your goodbyes. Well, uh, wanna, I want to thank you for this uh, opportunity, and I want to invite, uh, make sure everybody knows that you're all welcome uh, in Pax Lair, Pax Oku. Uh, check it out. Uh, come visit. Uh, come join uh, PV. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's, come, it's a lot of fun. Uh, great people, uh, great community. 
Uh, and, and, and like I said, it's a lot of fun, I, and we invite you. All righty, thank you. Now, um, Garrett, go ahead. Oh, me? I just want a basement in my house. Somebody build me a basement, and doesn't Sakara have the hottest voice ever? Come on, seriously. Gee, thanks for embarrassing me. But thank you. Um, 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 Elish Lorel, uh, your turn. Uh, well, I'd just like to say uh, I'll have an office set up in Paxoku, and uh, stop by if I'm around, and if you want to talk about doing a quest or anything like that. I uh, haven't had much door knocking yet, so come by and see me. All righty, thank you. Visago, the gentleman, go ahead. I just want to say thank you for this uh, opportunity, and uh, I'd like to see everybody on Thursday nights. Our events are posted on the PAXAR website, and uh, I guess that's it. Okay, and to you, Winfield. Yes, I'd really like to thank UO Radio, Sakar, and Viceroy for, for having us here and putting up with our extensive tour. Tours usually last uh, several hours, and you're able to get it in in an hour and a half. Um, I really have strong motivations for the entire community of the realm to be able to work together and uh, have a lot of fun working together, and, and that's what we're trying to do with Paxlair and, and work with the entire, entire realm uh, community. Alrighty. Well, thank you again. Um, this was the interview um, with Paxlair of Chesapeake, and our guests were Winfield, Mayor of Paxlair, Gareth, the Viceroy of Paxoku, and um, Elish Lareel, Minister of Quests, Elijah Cross, GM of the Paladins of Virtue, who are recruiting, hint, hint, um, Bisago, who is the GM of the House of uh, Hellendale, and um, Lucy, a uh, member of X, who unfortunately had to leave. So um, hi, everyone, on her behalf. And uh, thank you again uh, for um, being with us. Uh, I think I murdered the name Ellendale, I'm <laughs> sorry, <laughs> of the town. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I blame Viceroy. Everything I do wrong is Viceroy's fault. Never mind. So thank you again, everyone, for being with us. To, uh, thanks to everybody that joined us in, uh, during the tour. And um, it was a beautiful tour. Um, it is a beautiful town. They're both beautiful towns. So everybody, I really do strongly encourage you to create a newbie character and come visit the towns. The first, the Feluca town is just um, west of the Compassion Desert. And the um, Takuna town is just north of the Moon Gate. So take the time, go visit. It is worth the detour. So thank you again, everyone, for being here with us. And um, don't forget, we have um, our talk shows every Saturdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern and next Sunday, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern as well. We will have yet another community interview for you guys. So thanks again for everyone for being there, people in IRC, for uh, joining us as well. Goodbye, everybody.